Hello, welcome back. Okay, um, I am going to go over the notebooks and planners that I plan on using for 2020. So jumping right in, I am currently on journal 134, I think, 134, and that's partly 2019 and going into 2020, still in my camel, my absolute favorite. Don't foresee myself moving back to any other main cover for my regular journal. Nothing's really quite changed. I think the setup on the inside has changed, but nothing on the outside has really changed. So that's my personal journal. Um, the olive cover is for my daughter's journal that I keep for her. And I don't foresee this changing ever. And it's a great way for me to make use of various covers. So this is an ongoing thing that I will have and that is for Gemma. And then my brown is for my husband's journal. And I think it's just because this leather is still so supple. I did not condition it when I first got it. I did not want to do that. And for some reason, it is still pristine looking. A little frustrated. I wanted to scratch. So I'm actually considering, I don't know, maybe popping it in the oven on a very low setting to dry it out a little bit more and see if that does something. But that's an ongoing project as well. That's my husband's journal that I keep for him. So those are all the leather covers. And then I also have my five-year journal that I write in every night, um, just one sentence or so. And this is, I'm going on my last year. So I'm very happy to finally finish this so I can move on to something prettier. Somebody was very kind enough to send me a very, very pretty five-year journal and it's the same size, um, same kind of um, structure. So that will kind of go well on the bookshelf next to each other when they are completed. So last year of that, very happy about that. Haven't brought this notebook out in a long time. But I managed to fill out a line or two. This is the project notebook that I use to keep track of books that I've read. I actually finished a book the other day. Very happy about that. I'm hoping to be able to, I don't know, get a few more books in there. So that's a goal of mine for 2020. So that's kind of like an ongoing side thing. A couple of these Daiso notebooks that I decided to turn into as just like a fun thing to do when I just have a few minutes to myself but I want to create but I don't have time to just do that in my regular journal. Um, I stick pen pal postcards if I receive them, um, images that I like from magazines but I don't want it to I don't know take up room in my journal. I used to just stick all this stuff into my regular journal but, <coughs> excuse me, but um, I'm on a, you know, somewhat tight budget this year. So my goal is to use up more things and I don't know, like I pay an average about six to nine dollars for the 13, the number 13 insert for these, depending on when I can get that price. Uh, I try to buy it at six dollars, but it's not always at six dollars on Amazon and I'm I'm a little bit more precious with those pages now because it's now more of memory keeping, uh, photos of my family, all of that. It's not as much of a scribble journal as it used to be for me. That's what's really changed in journaling for me in the past year. And so a lot of these like magazine images that are appealing but I don't necessarily want to keep in my journal and bulk up and you know waste those precious precious pages I'm gonna stick in here and so you know just images magazine cutouts of things that I've saved for a long time and that I needed a place to stick um, happy stories I put a lot of positive stories in here just things that make me happy and uh, random stickers. Sometimes when I'm 
just needing a little journal therapy or something, I will go in and stick washi down. I mean, stickers down just randomly. It just, you know, it's therapeutic for me. So, um, that's what this whole notebook is. And it's kind of getting chunky. I don't mind. It's just one of those fun notebooks that have no other purpose other than just to be um, a fun thing to do. And then I turned a second Daiso notebook into keeping images, once again, just images, but of things that I want to buy. And I find that that kind of helps the buying or not buying process. I'm just going to fill this with images of things that I want. I'm not going to print out pictures purposely of like stationary things but I can write about it in here and not waste those uh I mean, it's almost like a brain dump in that journal you know I can just go in here and just make my little wish lists of all the things that I want to buy um just pretty things I don't know just uh and then I might scribble down why I want them you know, a bunch of things that I want to buy for Gemma that I might not necessarily get her, but but could be inspiration for if I can find versions of it. Like, look at that. Tiffany's Advent Calendar. It is only $112,000. Only. That's a steal, people. You get $135 Eau de Parfum and a $12,000 Tiffany T bracelet. So for $112,000, guys, that's a deal. But, um, you know, if only, right? So just fill it with things like my wish list. Just talk through why I want to purchase, why I feel like I need to purchase. So that's something new that I've started in the past like couple months since the holiday season started when shopping is rampant and um, I'm really enjoying that. This is another project notebook. I actually did not get into this at all in 2018 as I'd wanted but it's a kind of a scrap therapy book inspired by Sue's Fish. I love her blog and her videos and it's just me punching holes into all sorts of pretty papers that I've saved or I want to use up. This is practice drafting from when I went to school. Vintage papers, just all sorts of things that I stuck in here to play with. And then bags of like scraps and other things that I wanted to incorporate, but it was the whole purpose of using things up and I have a lot of spare photos that I can go in here and stick in there and just play around with formats and just have a bit of fun. So these are all fun things to do when I have five minutes, 10 minutes to myself, but I don't have time to actually sit down and really journal for myself. And then finally, 2019, I went to uh, into a Hobonichi Weeks Mega planner, and I loved it. I love the size. I love the lightweightedness. I miss my bullet journal a lot, but the Loish term was such a heavy, bulky thing to carry around, and I bring my planner with me to work every day, and so I needed something that was small enough that I can stick into my purse if I'm out running errands. Now that I've got a toddler... She's a handful, and so I need something small that I can reference, and it's easy to just throw into a bag. So uh, the Hobonichi Weeks Mega is also my planner for this year. I got this kind of pretty periwinkle shade. I love this color. This is my favorite kind of light bluish purple lavender kind of color. It's <coughs> Excuse me. It's coming off a little bit more blue, but... Um, it's a bit of like a purple in person and um, this cover is from a friend of mine she was no longer using it and she was kind enough to gift it for me or to me and so I have that um, I don't know nothing 
nothing too special or much to say about that. It's just my personal planner. I use it for everything, for my family, for myself. I keep a separate work planner just because I keep track of so many things at work that it has to be separate. And um, that I'm using a moleskin one day a page um, format and I love it. It used to be a vertical uh, one week on one side and then it was blank paper on the other side and it wasn't enough. And then I did a one week on two pages and that still wasn't enough in a horizontal format. Still wasn't enough and I decided that I needed a uh, one day per page and that's worked out perfectly. So um, meetings and all of that, that goes in there, but everything personal goes in here. I'm very happy about my choice and I'm ready to retire this one. <clears throat> all right. Thanks guys. Um, I will see you in my next video. Bye.